Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. What is going on, YouTube people? Whew. What a week. What a week. We got some problems going on. We got some nonsense, some shenanigans. Two topics we're going to talk about today. What not breakers and just breakers in general. Dipping. I think that's what the kids say. Is that what the kids say? You dip. Am I doing it right? And fake deals. It's all fake. None of it's real. It's all staged. We're living in a simulation. It's all happening on the holodeck. Let's start with what not first. Because uh, I think this one's pretty clear cut and straightforward. Hey, if you're going to be a breaker, maybe don't do shady stuff. And hey, if you run one of these selling platforms, maybe have a little bit better, maybe beyond better. How about just a period, full stop, vetting process. The biggest problem right now is, is that basically during the pandemic and the run-up of the hobby and all the shenanigans, anyone that wanted to become a breaker, the two requirements were wax, so the ability to go wait in line at Target or Walmart for the restock vendor, and like a razor blade, and kind of a brief understanding of the U.S. postal system. If you had those three things, you could pretty much become a breaker and make a profit fairly easily. So time to wait in line, get a little bit lucky on the wax, how to operate an iPhone and how to ship something in the mail. You were golden. And the ease of entry to do this was basically nothing. Can you work the internet? You're good. Cause you could do it on a Facebook group, whatnot. Sure. They vet you. You have to apply, but it's not like some huge, a uh, big arduous process. I'm not sure on the other selling platforms, Loop and Card Shop Live and all that, like the intricacies of their details for getting approved to sell on there. But at least for whatnot, the largest platform, it is a fairly low barrier of entry. And then let Facebook, IG, Twitch, YouTube, there's literally zero barrier of entry other than just kind of gaining a little bit of a following for people to buy into your stuff. So all of a sudden, you just had all these people that had no real idea how a business works, uh, how, you know, morals and ethics work, and got sucked up by greed. And then they just basically right now, the situation that we're in with Whatnot specifically is, uh, if they hit something big, they just keep the card and don't send it. And then Whatnot refunds the people in the break. So... Uh, in this case, and I, I can't remember the name of the two breakers. It's It's been in 17 other videos, probably 30 other videos, probably 50 other videos. Uh, Retail King is the, is the most recent one, I believe. And then there was another one that happened this week. Yeah, after a bunch of peer pressure, whatnot, kicked them off the platform or whatever. I think they put up some half-ass apology. But nothing's going to change until there's a true vetting process for sellers. That's what will really fix this. And Fanatics coming online soon with their live selling platform. This needs to be extremely high on the priority list. Who are you going to let sell on your platform? What sort of requirements are there? What sort of vetting process is, is there? Are they going to be monitored? Are they going to be watched? If things go the slightest bit sideways with on camera, off camera, how you act, how you operate, are they going to cr crack down on that and potentially kick you off the platform? I would, because here's the problem with getting kicked off whatnot, like what's the big risk? Oh, okay, cool. I can't sell on whatnot anymore. Fanatics, they have the ability to tie it to your distribution. Hey, if you break on our platform and you're approved, you're going to get direct allocation or whatever. We're going to hook you up. And I have no idea if this is how it's going to work. I'm, I'm just spitballing here. That's a real threat to lose that if you screw up or do something dumb as a breaker. Listen, mistakes are going to happen. Just straight stealing a downtown on camera, that's not a mistake. But that's a real consequence if Fanatics ties it into access or discounts on product or the featured slots or whatever. 
I hope fanatics can thread the needle of being open to let your, I don't want to say your average everyday person, but that it's not some exclusive club that to, to be able to sell on there, however it ends up working. But I also help or hope that they have some form of standards, a vetting process, that it's not just, you know, any guy or girl that has a couple blasters laying around is in business. I hope it's a little bit more locked down from that. Uh, that that that's the that's the big thing there. I think that pretty much about covers that. Don't be an idiot if you're a breaker. Take care of your customers. Guess what? Your reputation follows you. It's a small world. The internet doesn't forget. The internet does not forget. It's like Pepperidge Farms. It remembers. All right. Let's get into the featured topic. It's all a fugazi. You know what a fugazi is? No. Fugazi. It's a uh, fake. Yeah, fugazi, fugazi. It's a wazi. It's a woozy. It's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real. <laughs> I feel like everybody knows this story by now or kind of what tipped this off, but the hot topic this week is fake nonsense in the hobby to just kind of boil it all down. And the kickoff event for this was a situation that happened in on a DAPS sports video. Uh, long story short, they did a box battle. They put slabs up. There were some shenanigans around the comps on the slabs. They did the box battle. The video, I watched it. It's right here. Shows that Daps wins, walks out with the cards. He won them. He's up four grand. He's bragging about how he won all these cards. End of the video. Cool. Great. That's the whole thing. Okay. That happened a couple days ago. Uh, a couple days after that, on Great Curators Between Two Slabs live stream, live stream, someone asks, hey, sucks to lose the Black Panther. And then Great Curator goes on to talk about how it was staged. There was some shenan his uh, His story is, is that there was some shenanigans with the comps. So after the fact, they decided not to go through with distributing the cards. Everybody left with their own cards. Okay. That is not what this displays. I watched the whole video. I watched the end of it. Good, bad, or indifferent. Maybe it was an innocent mistake. They, maybe they didn't think they needed to include that at the end of the video. Whatever the case might be, the cat is out of the bag now. And... Because of this incident, now everything is getting called into question. There's already a lot of questions about the operations, the day-to-day -day operations of some of these fine folks to begin with. And really hobby content in general, beyond just the, the, the four in this video, just period. People have always kind of been a little skeptical around some of the deals that went down at shows. And now this has turned into a full-blown feeding frenzy. I'm of the mind if the deal didn't actually complete, if it didn't play out the way that it did after the fact, they got down in the room and decided to said, hey, by the way, we're not actually going through with this. That should have been disclosed somewhere. You broke the trust of your audience by not talking about that somewhere. If you didn't want to include it in the video, you could have easily made an IG, a Twitter post, pinned a comment, whatever, that said, hey, after the fact, we talked about it, X, Y, or Z thing. This is what we ended up doing, FYI. So then everyone was in the loop. And when I say everyone, I mean the viewing audience was in the loop of what went down. Now, is that because that's not actually went down and this thing was staged right from the beginning or this was a legitimate thing that happened? That's the problem we don't really know now. And the internet is going to internet. The feeding frenzy has begun. I go to a lot of shows. I don't go to a lot of big shows, like influencer level shows besides the national uh, and maybe a couple other, you know, like I went to the Philly show, but there really wasn't a lot of camera crews at the Philly show. So I'm not around stuff like this on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I'm not flying to show to show. I'm on a lot of smaller local regional shows that aren't getting camera crews going to them. Uh, so I have never seen a staged deal go down in person. I, I shouldn't say that. 
I've seen deals go down in person. I don't know that they were staged. I've never seen people with cards and cash on the table and be like, cut, take two. I have never seen that before. Now, most of the deals that I have seen go down in person were usually in or around Ryan from Card Collector 2. And I can tell you that those are all legit, at least the ones that I've seen, like at the ship show and at trade nights and stuff like that. He moves from table to table fairly quickly. There's not, hey, cut multiple takes uh, when he operates in his business. Plenty of people have seen him at shows. That's the only real person I have had any time around in an instance like this. I've never seen him do anything nonsensical, at least around me. I can only speak to what I have seen with my own two eyes. But like I said, this now calls into question everything. People already like to be a little conspiracy theorist about this stuff. And then things like this happen that crack the floodgates open. And now everything is fake. Everything is fake. Here's the thing. Are some of the deals staged? Probably. Probably. I'm sure this is not the first time this has happened. And it causes calls into question a lot of that stuff. Is every single deal staged? Probably not. Some of them are probably fairly legitimate. Now, here's the part that you get into the gray area, because I know that this happens. A lot, I shouldn't say a lot. Some of the deals are prearranged. I have card A, you would like card A. You know that I'm coming to large regional show in two weeks. We negotiate on IG, we agree on a price, I'm gonna bring the card with me, you bring the cash. That happens all the time. Then when they get to the show, it's recorded like it's a negotiation. Hey, cool, you got that Herbert 101. All right, great, 5K, no, 10K, no, 6K, no, 9K. Okay, we'll split. Oh, we'll coin flip it or whatever. Uh, and, and maybe there's like a $500 swing one way or the other that they didn't necessarily agree to. But in that case, a card does legitimately change hands. The buyer did want to purchase the card. They gave money to the seller. The buyer showed up with the card at random large regional card show, handed it off to a buyer, cash was exchanged, and they went on their separate ways. Now, is that fake? If they prearranged a deal, a, a true negotiation happened prior to being in person, but then in person they play it up for the camera. Because I do believe that happens. I'm not sure there's anything wrong with that. As long as cash is changing hands and a card was legitimately sold, if they want to play up the theatrics and role play out the negotiations that they had on DMs or on the phone or whatever, for entertainment purposes, more power to you. We've been watching that for the last 30 years of our lives on reality TV. This is it's no different. Fine. As long as the deal legitimately goes down where things become a problem and you give a black eye to everybody is when stuff like this happens or a deal is truly staged hey yeah 15k for this cool yeah great look i sold this for 15k he's got it yada 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 cool 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 but no cash actually changes hands maybe the other person even takes the card uh, in a wink, wink deal. Hey, cool. Here's the card, you know, hang out with it for like a month so we can make it look like it's legitimate. And then eventually, you know, people will forget about it. And then we can, we can shuffle it back to me at some point in time in the future. We all know it's my card. Uh, you go ahead and hang on to it for the next 30 days or whatever. And then we'll figure it out back then. Maybe you could trade it back to me or I'll buy it back off you or some nonsense or it'll go through multiple hands, whatever the case might be. That's where it gets bad. And the problem, the real problem is even if it's 1% of deals are fake slash staged for the camera and no cash, no cards changes hands. That's 1% too many because the real pro the ones that are really punished here besides the audience and people that believe that that is a real comp and, you know, use that as information to go off of, to make purchase buying or selling decisions. The other people that that really puts in a bind are, the people that actually do content around card shows that do legitimate deals now, because 1% of people are screwing this things up and maybe it's more than that. I really don't know, but because uh, uh, people want to play games, 
now it calls in the question all of the people doing it legitimate. People are going to question their deals now. Every time, I can guarantee you, every show vlog of a major content creator that gets posted now, there's going to be at least a couple comments in the bottom saying, faked, staged, did this even happen, question mark, question mark, whatever. Which is fine. Ask your questions, I guess. It's a free country. Do whatever you want. But there probably are a lot of people out there that are doing things on the up and up, and now they get kind of drugged through the mud because of this. Now, this doesn't really affect me. I don't do show vlog content. I don't do on-camera deals. That's never been my thing. It never will be my thing. I'm too lazy to edit it because it's a pain in the butt. The only real winners here are the content creators in general, whether it's the people that were involved, the people making videos about it, myself included. This is a juicy topic. People are going to eat this up. They're going to clickbait the hell out of it. You're going to click it. You're going to watch it. Engagement's going to be high on all sides. You know, great curators talked about it before when he's gotten tangled up in some of this nonsense. It's great for engagement. Here's the secret. This is coming from a content creator. If you don't like what someone is doing content wise and you truly do not want to support them, whoever it is, whether it's curator, somebody else, just in, in period in life on in YouTube specifically, and just content in general, if you don't like what they're doing and you don't want to support them, the best thing that you could do is nothing. Don't watch it. Don't click on it. Unsubscribe. And then there's a little thing at the top right-hand corner that you can click on on your home screen that basically says, I never want to see videos from this person again. That is the best thing that you can do. Regardless of this situation, just in general, going forward, keep this in mind. If someone does something shady that you don't like, just basically shadow block them so you never see their content. Here's the thing. Here's what everyone wants to run and go do. And it's already happened on happened on the DAPS video. I looked at the comments. It's probably on this video. I didn't look at the comments. If you truly don't want to support their content, them or you know whatever happens in the future with somebody else, Myself included, feel free to use this advice if you hate me and you just hate watch. The best way to shut them down is not click on it. The second you click on their video and you click the dislike button and then you go into the comments and you start typing, you dip, you dip, you dip, fake curator, fake this, uh, fake deal, staged, you're an idiot, you're a clown show, this, that, or the other thing. YouTube... Instagram, TikTok, it doesn't care. All it sees is engagement. And then that feeds the beast. The algorithm then goes, and I'm no mystical beast to the algorithm. No one quite understands it, but we all know that it likes engagement. Click on a video, you engaged with it. You watch, you hate watched it, engagement. Guess what? YouTube secret, clicking the like button, or clicking the dislike button is the same thing from a YouTube perspective. All it reads is that you engaged in the video. It emotionally did something to you, basically. And it caused you to click an extra button that feeds the algorithm. Nothing changes whether you hit up or down. YouTube just reads it as engagement. It's just feedback for the creator to know whether people like or dislike the video. It feeds the algorithm the same whether it gets a thousand downvotes or a thousand upvotes. That's the way it's always been explained to me. Engagement is engagement. Then you get in the comments and then you start arguing with them. Maybe they just block you, but maybe they fight back. And then it's this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all engagement. And what does that do? That pushes the video to more people's homepage. More people are going to click on it. They're going to get more views and then it all filters and cycles down and, and continues from there. And then the video keeps going and going and going. That's what Sports Card Radio did so well. Props to them. Sports Card Radio, they are fantastic at engagement slash playing into the algorithm. They say something controversial. Everyone gets mad. Everyone goes and runs and watch the video. I shouldn't say everyone. A lot of people get mad in the comments. A lot of people want to argue in the comments. And then they respond. They poke the bear. Go look at their comment section. They poke the bear. 
get a rile out of people. Then they start going back and forth. And then what happens? Their video keeps getting pushed in front of everyone's homepage because of all the engagement. YouTube is just looking at it and going, holy smokes, this video must be great. Look at all the action that it's getting. Let's show it to more people because the more people that click on it, the more ads that they get to run and then the more money that YouTube makes. Because remember, YouTube gets a 50% cut of all the ad revenue generated. So if a video is getting a lot of engagement, a lot of people going back to it, a lot of people commenting on it, liking, disliking it, whatever, they're going to take that and continuing to push it out to more and more people. So file that one away. If you really don't like someone's content, just click the thing that says, don't show this video anymore or don't show, I forget how it's worded, uh, but if you click on it, you'll see it. And then it just doesn't pop up anymore. That's the best way if you truly don't enjoy what someone is doing in this space or any space. Feeding into it, they win. So generally speaking, this all sucks. There's much other, there's plenty of other things I'd rather be talking about. I'm on my way to the show in Pittsburgh, most likely, as you're watching this, uh, depending on when you're picking it up. I would much rather be recording a preview or some sort of recap from that than talking about this shenanigans. And then, like I said, this just causes a bunch of questions to be asked, which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but a lot of people that aren't doing anything wrong are probably going to get dragged into this mess with this. How much is fake? How much is real? I honestly don't know. As with most things in life, take what you hear, see, and read on the internet with a grain of salt, and as always, do your own homework and research on stuff. Don't take anyone's word for it. The pumpers and dumpers, the watchdogs, the news guys like me and Dustin, whatever, whatever that is, whether it's cards or not, whether it's cards and collectibles or just day-to-day -day the news, take their opinion, process it, and go seek out others. Don't be in an echo chamber. It's the best advice I could give you. That's all I got for you, boys and girls. We will catch you tomorrow for the weekly sports card market update. Peace.